Hello friends, welcome back to Endo Tales from Life. In this video, we are going to discuss uh, one of the most requested videos of recent times and I'm going to answer uh, one of the most frequently asked questions to me in recent times again. Yes, it is the Zirconia bonding protocol. Yes, so without wasting much time, let's go into the video. But before that, I'll just give you a small insight about this video. I've divided this video into two parts. Number one is we are going to critically discuss if zirconia bonding protocol is as reliable as lithium disilicate based bonding protocol. And in the second part, we are going to discuss about the more evidence based and the most clinically practical way of bonding zirconia based on current evidence. Right? So, uh, let's straight away watch the video. Advancement in the dental material science is so rapid that what was considered impossible a decade back is now possible. Yes, a classical example for this is dental zirconia. A few years back, we were, it was believed that dental zirconia cannot be etched and hence it cannot be bonded. But here we are in April 21, we going to discuss based on current evidence how zirconia can be bonded in a clinical scenario. The moment I say this, the next question that comes in our mind is, is zirconia bonding as reliable as lithium disilicate bonding. So we are not here to debate against lithium disilicate because we very well know that lithium disilicates have their own indications, advantages, they have excellent aesthetics, their bonding protocol is time tested. But what we are going to discuss today is there are some indications for zirconia and there are some advantages of zirconia which a lithium disilicate may not have. So we are only going to talk about how we can improve the addition of zirconia in restorations especially which have less retentive preparations. So there are common myths prevailing about zirconia. One such thing is that zirconia can be very destructive to the opposing tooth. It can wear the opposing tooth. But there are enough articles now to show that monolithic or the full contour zirconia has one of the lowest wear to the opposing tooth. It's the layered zirconia and if uh, in fact any layered ceramic restoration be it Emax or be it a PFM has a high wear to the opposing tooth because over time this layering ceramic generally has a lower flexural strength which results in micro cracking or chipping and due to the surface roughness these ceramics are the ones that cause more wear to the opposing tooth and monolithic zirconia meaning there is no layering which is also called the full contour zirconia have one of the lowest wear and then we always believe that zirconia are not as aesthetic as lithium disilicates yes definitely they do not have a glass face in it and lithium disilicates have beautiful uh, translucency but now recently zirconia have evolved a lot because of the introduction of the low translucency zirconia. So again, we are not going to compare it with the of lithium disilicate, but what you need to know is zirconia now are more translucent than they were in the past. So a classical example again, this is uh, my own personal clinical case. You can see here uh, the translucency of the incisal edge. This is a monolithic restoration without layering. And again, another uh, clinical situation, uh, this is a lithium disilicate on two maxillary central incisors and what you see on the right is two zirconia restorations on the maxillary central incisors. And here again what you see on the top is two zirconia restorations on the two maxillary central incisors and what you see in the bottom is two lithium disilicate restorations. So we can appreciate that zirconia especially the low translucency zirconia now have acceptable aesthetics with improvement in translucency as well and this again is a restoration in the mandibular anterior region. Now the next question is okay they are translucent they don't wear the opposing tooth but what about the retention in cases especially where there is less uh, retention like you have a short clinical crown where you have done a crown preparation or can I do an inlay or onlay or veneers which are completely dependent on bonding as these preps do not have much of retention. 
Lithium disilicate based ceramic have a well established protocol which is pretty popular which involves the etching of the intaglio surface of the restoration with hydrofluoric acid and what happens is when you etch since these are glass ceramics they are etchable by hydrofluoric acid they expose the glass matrix by creating microporosities and the silica surface is also exposed following which a silane coupling agent is added these are basically bifunctional monomers which can react to both the inorganic component in the ceramic which is silica and can also bond to the organic part that is the dental composite resin. So the function of the silane coupling agent here is primarily to create a bond between two incompatible surfaces that is the ceramic and the resin cement. But the problem with zirconia was uh, it cannot be etched. So when we have, when we don't have a glass matrix, hydrofluoric acid is ineffective. So the point that we all need to note down here is the bonding protocol of Emax, which is the popular brand name uh, of uh, lithium disilicate ceramic, is cannot be applied for zirconia. So the bonding protocol for lithium disilicate is completely different from that of zirconia if you fail to do this or if you follow the same protocol that you follow for a lithium disilicate on a zirconia you will frequently have failure in zirconia bonding because zirconia do not have a glass matrix it is just a metal oxide it's a zirconium oxide so that is why it was initially uh, recommended to just loot these zirconia based restoration with glass enormous cements and they were recommended only in retentive preps like a crown with an adequate height and whenever you need a preparation which has less retention lithium disilicates were advocated but what about zirconia for a bonded restoration can it be used or no so of late there are studies which found that zirconia cannot be etched they do not have silica a silane coupling agent may not be helpful but zirconia have a positive interaction with the phosphates. So that is why the phosphate based functional monomers have become popular. So one classical example of one of the most popular uh, functional phosphate based functional monomer in the adhesives in the resin cement is 10 MDP. Yes. The 10 MDP can the phosphate group in the 10 MDP can interact with the zirconia. So this is some good news, and this is what has enabled zirconia bonding. So let us see what are the commercially available primers that have this phosphate-based monomer that is 10 MDP. So Bisco has a product called Z Prime Plus, and there is Clearfill ceramic primer from uh, Kurare and Iocla has Monobond Plus so you need to note that this is not Monobond S but this is Monobond Plus which has both a silane and also a 10 MDP in it and these two primers you need to really note it down because they have both silane and 10 MDP what is the advantage of having a silane anyway we know that zirconia does not have silica but there is a significance which we will be discussing later. And apart from the primers, the resin cements also, if it has a 10 MDP, <coughs> it is found to be beneficial. So the, what we recommend here is dual cure or a self-curing, self-adhesive resin cement with MDP. So why we need to have self-adhesive resin cement is so that we can eliminate the step of a separate adhesive application why we need to eliminate uh, the adhesive application is though there are some authors who recommend the application of an adhesive if you are going to apply an adhesive you cannot apply a traditional light cure adhesive so you need to have again a dual cure adhesive for this purpose because the light transmission through zirconia is not going to be high and if you are going to cure it prior before placement it can form a thick layer which can interfere with the seating of the zirconia restoration. So that is why to avoid this step, it's preferable to completely avoid the adhesive and go for 
a self adhesive dual cure resin cement with 10 mdp so what are the commercial brand uh, of this 10 mdp containing dual curing resin cement yes the kurare is the company that invented 10 mdp and later after the patency was over there are other companies who are also now incorporating 10 mdp so you can see these products clear fill sa looting cement from kurare and g some link ace also has 10 mdp which is a self adhesive resin cement and what about other companies so other companies claim that though they directly don't say that they have a 10 mdp because of the patency but there are some companies like for example relax from 3m which mentions that this also has methacrylate monomers containing phosphoric acid groups which is basically for zirconia bonding so uh, according to literature you cannot say that these cements have 10 mdp but manufacturer have claim that they have different names for the mdp monomer that is incorporated into these products so let's straight away go to the point what is the protocol for bonding zirconia so is 10 mdp alone sufficient to form a chemical bond to zirconia so this is one systematic review that was published in 2019 and based on this article you can find out that zirconia phosphate interaction alone gives only a short term bond stability but what we want is a long term bond durability isn't it so that is why surface treatment have been recommended has been proven that surface treatment improves the bonding which is with the help of sandblasting so sandblasting with the traditional alumina plus the application of mdp based primers and mdp based resin cement is the one that has proven to have a long term bonding ability there is also another aspect that has been recommended in the literature which also has been tested over a long period of time which is nothing but the tribochemical sandblasting technique this is also similar to the traditional sandblasting the only difference is the sandblasting is not just done with alumina particles but instead these particles have alumina that are coated with silica yes this is commercially available from 3m the product is called as cojet and uh, this particular tribochemical treatment or sandblasting with silica what exactly happens is this not only leaves surface roughness to the intaglio surface but also it forms a silica coating on the zirconia surface so this is cojet sand but unfortunately this is not available in india and from some of the 3m representatives i found that even globally this product has been slowly withdrawn so in another study they have found that uh, sandblasting with felspathic porcelain powder can also be having a long term uh, improvement in the bonding ability because this also leaves behind a silica coating on the zirconia surface but in this particular study they have used uh, i mean they have used a felspathic block which they have milled to a 30 micron particle size but i did the research i did some ground work the main reason why uh, there was a delay in making of this video is i had to do some ground work whether this tribochemical treatment is clinically possible or practical especially in our part of the world so even i tried if felspathic powder which is commercially available can be used but the particle size is not matching the recommendations and also these are extremely expensive so uh, this is not going to be practical so what is a practical effective protocol right now that is what we are going to discuss and this is one of the latest evidence reliable evidence as it's also systematic review published in the journal of prosthetic dentistry in feb 2021 so this is what we are going to discuss today and now let's have a clinical demonstration and to make it interesting i'm going to completely demonstrate a case from the start till the end so this case that i'm going to demonstrate is the bonding 
of a zirconia only or an endocrine. So this is how the patient reported to us. This is a maxillary first molar. So we know this case requires endo followed by a bonded respiration that was planned. So we started the endodontic treatment with just a single tooth isolation, caries removal and the entire endodontic procedure was completed. And after obturation in the first visit, the orifices are sealed with flowable composite. So a universal bond is immediately applied after cleaning the pulp chamber of all the sealers and light cure, a universal bond is applied and light cure following which a flowable composite is placed over the floor of the pulp chamber and this is cured as well and now the rubber dam is removed as you can see there is still some proximal caries that is left behind near the gingival seat and after removal of the rubber dam now there is no fear of contamination after the endodontic treatment is done and also the pulp chamber is sealed. Now the caries in the proximal seat is addressed and any gingivectomy that is needed is also performed at this visit and you can temporize the, uh, the cavity in this visit and send the patient. So in the next visit what we are going to do is do the only preparation and this is how we begin. So the patient reports with the same temporary filling that was given and the temporary filling is first removed and for an onlay we know that axial reduction is not needed and enamel is preserved so we only use a wheel diamond to do occlusal reduction so when we do occlusal reduction it's just done in one half first so that you have a comparison of how much of occlusal reduction has been done and then the other half is also prepared and you can see bleeding now because the birds may accidentally touch the gingiva here and then once the preparation is completed so I'm showing it in real time generally when we document we don't show these slides of bleeding but for you to understand the actual working workflow I'm showing all these pictures and here after this I just use a cross to with pressure to temporarily arrest uh, the bleeding that is happening and before impression we know that both impression materials are hydrophobic or even if I'm going to do a digital scanning even then the, the moisture of blood is not a good thing to have there. So one of the best products that I love for gingival retraction and also for, uh, for an astringent effect is the retraction paste from 3M. The, which is a, a astringent and a retraction paste. So I'm going to place it onto the gingival area. It comes with a nice thin cannula which can also be injected into sulcus. So instead of placing a retraction cord, this also serves the purpose of both retracting the gingiva and can also have an astringent effect. And you see, this is how the uh, moisture control is achieved. And yes, the preparation is over and we have nice uh, moisture control and now it's either ready for impression making or scanning based on what you use. So this is uh, the preparation and then after making the impression the temporization can be done this way. The shade is also selected and sent to the lab. So in this particular case we have done a digital impression and also the digital designing of the restoration was done and this is where uh, the zirconia have a slightly uh, better edge to lithium disilicate because though lithium disilicates can also be manufactured in the CAD CAM process zirconia can only be manufactured in CAD CAM process and lithium disilicate CAD CAM the CAD blocks are expensive and so not being often used in laboratories it's expensive whereas zirconia is always manufactured in a CAD CAM process so the workflow is smoother and the reliability on the technician skills is less you can see this we have done a digital impression and the impression is sent to the lab and uh, using an exocad software the uh, onlay is completely designed and upon my approval they are going to just mill it this is going to be monolithic there is no layering onto this and there is only staining that is going to be done later. So this is the final milled zirconia 
which is stained and now we are going to bond this the patient is called for the bonding and let us see how we start with the bonding procedure so what we are supposed to do is remove the temporary respirative material so here we are do not we are do not recommend you to use any burrs because it can change or alter the cavity shape which can again uh, make the respiration fit loose there so we only remove the respiratory material with ultrasonic and we can also do a pumice wash so that the biofilm uh, is removed and it, the surface is more suitable for bonding so just with the use of an ultrasonic scaler all the old respiratory material is removed completely and now we have the uh, restoration that has come from the lab which is going to be tried in the patient's mouth for the fit high points it's also checked and also it's a good practice to take a radiograph to see the internal fit of the restoration and now once everything is set we are going to do the bonding procedure so what we need to know is after doing a try in we have done it uh, in the patient's mouth there is going to be salivary contamination so the salivary phosphates also compete with the zirconia surface and if the salivary phosphates are going to bond to the zirconia now when i'm going to apply a zirconia primer it cannot bond there so the contamination has a very high negative effect on zirconia bonding so what is recommended how do i now remove the salivary contaminated phosphates so one of the best method is to sandblast also we know that sandblasting is definitely required for creating micro porosities on the zirconia surface so for people who do not have a char site sandblaster you should definitely request your lab you should make sure your lab sandblasts the internal surface of your restoration before they deliver it to you or if you have a char site sandblasting so char sandblasting is not done uh, earlier instead after trying we do a char site sandblasting and this is the char site sandblasting unit that i have which is installed in my chair you can see it just installed there and uh, 50 microns aluminum alumina particles are also used for the sandblasting procedure so what is the protocol that is recommended for zirconia bonding is you need to have the zirconia i mean you need to have the alumina particles in the size range of 30 to 50 microns and the pressure is the same that we almost use for our air rotors which is 20 to 30 psa which can be verified in your dental chairs and it, it is done for 20 seconds you need to make sure the handpiece is held at a 45 degree inclination at a 10 millimeter distance you need to make sure your sandblasting handpiece is not stationary it needs to keep in move be in motion because it, we don't want to uh, uh, remove a lot of surface and we do not want to damage the surface of the zirconia as well that's why you should know if your lab has also already done the sandblasting if your lab has already done the sandblasting do not repeat the sandblasting technique here and uh, if you don't have a sandblaster then you can ask your lab to sandblast and after the contamination after you have done the train there are other methods to remove the phosphates yes we have a very good product from ioclark which is called as ioclean so this ioclean basically is a highly alkaline solution with a ph of almost 13 to 14 and apart from that this also has zirconium oxide so what happens is this zirconium oxide with an al highly alkaline pH is going to remove the phosphates that are sticking to the zirconia surface by uh, absorbing and by bonding to it. So the zirconia restoration surface is now free. So Ioclean has proven with numerous studies that it can remove the phosphates that have been uh, sticking to the uh, internal surface of the zirconia. And what are other materials that can be done? Yes, 5% uh, sodium hypochlorite for 20 seconds is also uh, mentioned in the literature but definitely sandblasting and ioclean are much better compared to a 5% sodium hypochlorite for removal and the other commercially available product is zirclean from bisco which is again a highly alkaline solution of a potassium hydroxide so uh, before we prepare the surface to be conditioned this is called the putty bed technique uh, uh, addition silicone putty little is mixed and 
the restorative material is pressed into it this before it sets so that only the intaglio surface is exposed so that I will not unnecessarily uh, condition or sandblast the restorative, the highly polished occlusal or the restorative surface of the material. So this is how the putty bed has been prepared and first uh, we uh, apply Ivo clean to the sandblasted uh, tissue surface after contamination and this is left for 20 seconds and then this is also washed with water dried and then we apply a mono bond plus which has a 10 mdp and also silane if we have done an additional tribochemical treatment the silane which is present is also going to be in action if not uh, only the 10 mdp is going to be helpful for the bonding here so this uh, monobond plus is also applied and it is left for 60 seconds after air drying to allow a primer to act on the restorative surface this doesn't need any light curing so this is the surface which has been cleaned which has been sandblasted and which is also been applied with the zirconia primer containing a 10 mdp and now we need to know how we prepare the tooth surface for bonding yes so before we even talk about etching or uh, other protocols of the preparation of tooth surface what you need to know is isolation as we discussed that the salivary contamination can have very high uh, negative effect on the bonding so uh, rubber dam isolation is definitely going to be advantageous you can see here there is zero um, contamination from the oral cavity uh, rubber dam isolation is done multiple tooth isolation is preferred here whereas when i do endo we do a single tooth isolation as it's quick but when we do bonding a uh, multiple tooth isolation is better here and we do a selective etching of enamel though we are going to use a self adhesive resin cement the self adhesive resin cement uh, adhesives basically perform well on dentin even without etching but studies have shown that enamel requires etching even when you use self adhesive resins so uh, we are going to do a selective etching of the enamel alone and following this we are going to place the dual cure self etch uh, resin cement which is mixed and dispensed into the cavity and here we need to be quick and now we place the restoration we need to seat the restoration properly and what we do is a tack cure which is just a one second cure so that uh, we don't allow the resin cement to set completely it is made in a gel state at this stage it is very easy to remove all the excess and in fact it's almost impossible to remove all the excess cement if you allow the resin cement to set completely so after a one second tack cure we immediately need to do the excess cement removal the interproximal flossing and uh, all the excess cement is removed with a low power setting of scalar but we need to make sure that you have a firm pressure onto the restoration as the complete polymerization is not yet completed and then yes you can do the additional light curing and uh, since it's a dual curing even if you haven't done complete light curing once uh, the light curing then the self cure mechanism also takes over and the cement is going to have its primary set and after all the excess cement has been cleaned up this is how it's going to look and then we remove the rubber dam and again make sure there are no excess cements anywhere so this is how we began this is the prep and this is the final restoration once again we need to make sure we take a radiograph to see the fit and also to make sure there are no excess cements in the interproximal region. So the take home message here is lithium disilicate bonding is time tested but the same bonding protocol cannot be applied for zirconia. Zirconia has a separate bonding protocol and the bottom line is zirconia can also be bonded but are there enough evidences and are there long term clinical trials? Yes, there are. Uh, few studies, very few studies. This is 
study that has been published in operative dentistry, dentistry with just a one year follow up for ceramic veneer that is zirconia veneer. So we know that veneers the ideal material is lithium disilicate but zirconia with the same pro bonding protocol that we have discussed have also been done or used for veneers. And in this study they have used monolithic zirconia bonded using the same protocol for endocrowns and you can see that this study was for has three years follow-up and in the three years follow-up they have done almost 289 restorations and none of them have failed and there is another study which is again a restoration which is completely dependent on bonding which is almost like a Maryland bridge it's a resin bonded bridge all ceramic zirconia resin bonded bridge which is completely dependent on bonding again the same bonding protocol has been employed and this has a 10 year follow up and again a survival rate as high as 98 percentage so uh, how do I want to conclude here is we are not going to talk whether lithium disilicate is better or zirconia is better the bottom line is they each have their own indication but zirconia definitely can be bonded than what we thought a few years back but is it going to last as high as lithium disilicate yes still there is some more studies that has to answer this question but as of now it definitely looks promising so the take home message that I want you all to carry home is the APC technique that is zirconia needs to be air abraded or sandblasted with 50 30 to 50 micro microns alumina and since we do not have tribochemical bonding right now in India and also uh, the recent literature says uh, sandblasting with alumina has good enough uh, clinical uh, durability we are sticking to that and number two is the use of zirconia primer that is primers that have 10 MDP in it uh, I have given few examples of commercial products that have this and also to choose a dual cure self adhesive resin cement which also preferably has 10 MDP to it. So thank you so much for watching this video and for more educational content please follow me on these social media platforms where I share my cases and knowledge.